Hey guys, Scripture here with another video, and I guess there's details coming out about some of the unused Star Wars footage uh, in the prequels. I think a lot of it is in Revenge of the Sith. I guess there's, you know, we've always kind of known there's been this four-hour cut, and apparently George had just tons and tons of extra footage that they did not include for various reasons, and so some of this stuff's starting to come out. I mean, there's obviously going to be a lot more, but... Uh, I would just like to go through this just uh, real quick here. It's kind of interesting, um, some of the stuff that uh, was taken out. And then, you know, I'd like to hear what you guys have to say about the reasoning behind some of that. So over recent years, the Star Wars prequels have received a resurgence of praise, primarily driven by those who grew up with the films, expressed their endless adoration for the three fantasy classics from George Lucas. In a recent interview with Chris Castellani, Star Wars stunt coordinator Nick Gillard revealed lots of exciting never uh, before her details about the prequel trilogy. Gillard revealed that George uh, Lucas filmed so much footage for the prequels that there are three more movies in footage left on the cutting room floor across the three films. This corroborates previously revealed information about Revenge of the Sith, which claimed that the original cut of the film was over four hours long. That's pretty wild when you think about it. Think about the budgets for <laughs> for the prequel movies and that Literally, they basically shot six movies on those budgets, and then think about the acolyte, <laughs> two hundred and whatever thirty or fifty million dollar budget for a little crappy TV show. It's pretty wild when you think about it. Uh, more about the iconic battle between Anakin and Obi Wan in Revenge of the Sith was also revealed in the interview. Okay, this is where it gets interesting. A version of the scene that was filmed featured Anakin grabbing Obi Wan by the throat disarming him and saying, I'm really sorry, you have to be killed. Now, I will say, George did not generally like to use the word killed. If you watch Star Wars, he, he tries to avoid it. He's always using, like, destroyed or whatever. He, he, he'll he pick a different word. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Anakin then proceeded to try to cut Obi-Wan's head off, a move which was then deflected by Obi-Wan to cut Anakin's arms off. If Obi-Wan's disarmed, how would he do that? Whatever, anyways, I'm sure there's a way. Giller stated that he and the team hated the infamous high ground scene in Revenge of the Sith and that they campaigned as hard as they could to get it changed. But George was having none of that. He explained that he believes that the scene in the final cut was Spielberg's idea. What do you guys think of that? Would that have been better than the high ground thing? I mean, I kind of think so in some ways. Like, it's a little more, or it's a little more organic. Um, the high ground thing feels a little more forced than, than this. Like, this just feels like it's happening kind of just while they're fighting rather than this kind of, like, staged kind of moment or whatever. But, I mean, I'm not against the high ground thing. I can kind of see why the, why Gillard and these guys were fighting to keep it kind of what it was, um, originally, though. What do you guys, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section. I, I mean, that's super interesting. I'm not really, like, pro either one but i do kind of see where they're coming from it it, it it would feel a little bit yeah like i said more kind of natural gillard played the jedi sin dralig in revenge of the sith and is briefly seen dueling hayden christensen's anakin skywalker via hologram gillard provided new details about the original version of this scene that was filmed anakin stabs a small girl right through the throat Holds her by it while he grabs another one. It was nasty. That's interesting. What do you guys think of that? I don't know. That, like, I don't need to see the kids getting stabbed. Like, like when he goes into the, th into the, the, the room there and the kids are like, what are we going to do? And he just pulls out his lightsaber and he looks at them all, all crazy like. I'm like, yeah, I know what he's going to do. I don't really need to see it. Um, just a side note, I, I think that um, Star Wars Theory would probably have preferred this because he's talking about how that would have been cool to see that stuff. I, I don't need to see that. And I kind of can see where George would take it out just because it's a little much, I think. I, I kind of I agree with that. That's a little much. Um, so I can see why he took it out. If he had left it in, I probably wouldn't have cared either. Um, but I can see why I took it out. You guys, you guys let me know in the comment section what you think, if you would have preferred to see that. Um, Gillard also explained that Lucas was involved in every department in making the prequels from cinematography, visual effects, art direction, fight choreography, costume design, sound design, production design, casting, acting, and more. 
In one of the final questions, Castellani asks if Gillard would return to choreography fight sequences for upcoming Star Wars shows if he was offered, and he emphatically responded, of course I would. Check out uh, Castellini's full interview with you. Well, why wasn't he doing it already? Yeah, so I'm trying to figure this out. Like, some of the fighting in Ahsoka was pretty crappy. And you've got Eric Steelberg. The Acolyte, I know people think that it's good choreography, but it's actually not. Like, in a couple spots it is, but when he's fighting them all at the same time, it's absolutely awful. If you watch my review, it's so obvious. Um, so, that's Christopher Clark. And Counter, part of the team envisioning the Sith Lord's legendary hallway massacre near the end of Rogue One. The dark, the mastermind behind it, action director Christopher Clark Cohen... Oh, so he did the Vader scene in Rogue One. Anyways, I'm just surprised that, Gil that Gillard's never been approached. Like, it, it's just weird to me. You have this guy, he's, he's you know, he's only going to be in the business for so much longer. Why wouldn't you use him rather than these other people? Anyways, so that's very interesting stuff. And then there's another one here. George Lucas deleted the best lightsaber fight from Revenge of the Sith, which was better than the Darth Maul fight. Okay. Um, Star Wars has been home to some of the, and by the way, that's like a, a thing now. Everyone's saying it, every, this and that is better than the Darth Maul fight. Like, remember the Acolyte? Remember, I think it was Headland came out and said, oh, it's better than Duel, like, Duel of the Fates. It's like, just, just let the fans decide. You don't need to say anything. <laughs> Star Wars has been home to some of the best action, action sequences. Be it lights, uh, epic lightsaber battles or thrilling fight scenes, yet amidst all the spectacular moments, the stunt coordinator Nick Giller revealed something quite heartbreaking that sheds light on what could have been the ultimate fight scene. Giller revealed uh, a gem hidden from fans' eyes thanks to George Lucas's decision. This deleted sequence, described as one of the most intricate lightsaber battles ever conceived, held the potential to become a fan favorite, leaving the fans yearning for what could have been. While opinions and preferences vary among Star Wars fans, there's one thing most agree on. The duel between Maul and Kenobi and Qui-Gon Jinn is among the best. However, Nick Gillard, the stunt coordinator responsible for crafting these fights, has a different perspective. In an interview with Entertainment Weekly in 2019, he made a surprising revelation saying, no, there is another, and that is a fight from Revenge of the Sith, where Obi-Wan faces off against six of General Grievous' bodyguards simultaneously, although Gillard had some different plans for the scenes. This choreography never saw the light of day. It was the most complicated fight scene we ever did, and George said, I'm really sorry, I'm going to drop a container on five of them. Gillard was heartbroken. Uh, okay, well, you know, if you, when you look at the scene, though, like... I don't know, I mean, it would have been cool, I guess, to have him fighting those dudes, but at the same time, then what's what's everybody else doing? Just standing around watching? That's the problem when you get into some of these things. I don't know. I don't know. Would, would Grievous just stand there and let him fight his, his henchmen and then step in after? I guess that was the plan. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm kind of, and even in that scene, the fact that the battle droids aren't doing anything, like, I'm kind of a fan of, like, the bad guys are the bad guys. If you're going to, like, have a duel the henchmen aren't just going to stand around and watch. You know, it's dumb. You know, and then when you look at, like, Ahsoka, right, where she's fighting Morgan, and in initially, before they start fighting, the all the, whatever, zombie troopers, or whatever the heck they are, are shooting at her, right? They're all standing around, they're trying to, trying to kill her, and then as soon as she starts fighting Morgan, they just stop and watch. And you're like, uh, why are you stopping? Just shoot her. She's distracted now. It should be very easy. So I'm not a big fan of that. So the idea that like, and even in that scene with all those battle droids just kind of standing there and not shooting him when he's fighting Grievous, like, I don't know. And then to have him fighting these, all these six guys and then no one else is doing anything. It just doesn't really make sense. Uh, we all worked very hard to make the scene perfect, but due to time constraints during filming and the scene not being crucial to the plot, George Lucas decided to snip it. To make it easy, he decided Obi-Wan crushes the bodyguards with the force using a heavy part of the ceiling fans will ne will now never know what could have been here's the other thing about that scene though as well if obi-wan has this like epic battle with these six dudes or whatever and he's spinning around he's doing all this and he's dodging this and he's dodging that and then he kills them all that would kind of reduce the tension when he's fighting grievous because it's like well now i don't care if grievous has four lightsabers he's fighting one guy now this is nothing for him you know what i'm saying so in a way, I can kind of see even from that perspective. I don't know if that's where George was coming from or if it was just simply this thing, oh, we, we don't need it. But if you think about it, right, if he just has this epic, you know, fight with these guys 
And oh, now he's going to fight Grievous. Yay. It kind of diminished that, I think, to some degree. Um, so anyways, it, interesting. As more stuff comes out, I'll talk about it. Um, it's cool that we're getting some of this stuff. I know this is an older article, but still, it's pretty cool that we're getting some of this stuff. But anyways, guys, let me know in the comment section what you think. Um, if you would have liked to see these changes. If you would have liked to see seen Anakin uh, with the youngling there. <laughs> And just if you if you would like to see the full four hour cut of Revenge of the Sith, I know I I probably would like to see that. That would be kind of cool. Uh, as usual, if you like this content, please like subscribe. I was also the channel. Feel free to check out anything else on my channel. Have yourselves a really good day.